what's the point of the intro? Like, what am I trying to get across? Oh, didn't see you there. Welcome to Let's Paint. I'm Christian. <laughs> Which one is this for? <laughs> Hi there, welcome to Let's Paint. I'm Christian. This is part one of a three, three, three part, three part, three part. I work better when I'm on the ground. Hello, welcome to Let's Paint. I'm Christian. Welcome to part one of a three part painting this week. Today, Wednesday, Friday, and the entire video will be uploaded in its entirety, unedited, on Saturday. Let's do a Let's Paint. Hi, welcome back to Let's Paint. We're gonna do a wonderful little painting today, uh, like almost like it's in the springtime up in the mountains. We're, we're gonna use only a few colors. All the colors are in the description of this video. And uh, I already got the canvas all covered with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. And we are all set to do a wonderful painting today. So if you're ready, let's head right up to the canvas here. So I'm thinking, Let's do one that's almost like sunset, like it's almost nighttime. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right into a little bit of a lizard and crimson and just tap, tap the color into the brush to assure, to assure, ooh, assure a nice even distribution of color. And we're gonna go in and just tap into a little bit of the Prussian blue. Now if you don't have Prussian blue, you can absolutely use Stalo blue and it'll be just as beautiful. But we're looking almost for like a lavender color kind of medium tone, not to either the blue or the red side. And you don't need to worry about overmixing too much. It'll add a lots, lots of cool actions in your sky. So let's go up to the canvas here. And right along here on the horizon, we're just gonna dance in some of this lavender. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down so that way it gets lighter as you go down to the horizon. As it picks up the liquid white, it will naturally get lighter down by the horizon. And you don't even have to worry or think about it at all. Just using those little crisscross strokes right across the canvas there. And just to clean off the brush, we're gonna have a little water in this painting. Go tap back into our color. And using long horizontal strokes, we're gonna put some water in this painting here. So we're gonna start right in the corner where it's darkest and just come straight across and work our way up and it will naturally get lighter as you go to the horizon. Come on the other side as well. Now you got some beautiful lavender water in your world here. All right, so without cleaning the brush, this is lazy, I like lazy painting, we're gonna go right into that Prussian blue or phthalo blue if you have phthalo blue, but today we're using Prussian blue. I'm going after something that's a little bit colder, a little bit of a colder sky here. Maybe it's early spring. We're just tapping right into that color. Nice, even distribution of paint right in the end of the bristles there. All right. Now our darkest part of the sky, this is where it's almost turning into nighttime. So we're going to start in the corners where it's darkest and work our way back down. It's so using the same crisscross strokes. We're gonna work our way across the top of the canvas and work our way down. And as you know, as you work down, it'll pick up more of the liquid white and get lighter as we get into that lavender color. But be careful, you don't go too far into that lavender color because the Prussian blue is a million times stronger than that alizarin crimson down there and it will absolutely just eat it up. Your whole painting will be blue. And that's great, but that's not what we're going for today. So we'll just come right up to that lavender color there. We're gonna, actually we're gonna darken the edges just a tiny bit more today. Make it real dark. Almost like a vignette. Oh, there we go, that's what I wanted. Helps draw the eye into the painting. The corners are darker. Okay, let's go ahead and clean our brush here. And we clean our brushes with odorless paint thinner or odorless mineral spirits which you can find at the store. Get off the excess. Then, as Bob would say, beat the little devil out of the brush. Makes a big mess though. Good thing I'm in this space where I can make a mess. 
then I'm just dabbing it off on a paper towel just to get all the extra mineral spirits off. So now we're gonna go ahead and blend this sky out so it's really, really smooth. So again, we're gonna start with our lighter color because we're gonna work our way up so we don't bring that darker color into the lighter color. We're just gonna do the same exact little X stroke going right across the sky there. Working our way up, smooth as silk. And then when you get to that, where the lavender color touches the blue, we're gonna blend it so you can't tell where the lavender starts and the blue start, the, excuse me, the lavender ends and the blue starts. And then you just keep working your way up. We're just taking out all those brush strokes. Into the corners. And then very lightly, very lightly, just come across, take out any of those brush strokes. And down here in the water, we're just gonna blend right across. And if some of that blue gets into your water, that's more than okay. Can't make a mistake here. Anything can be fixed. Anything can be fixed. You'll see me, I'll make a mistake for sure. And anything can be fixed. So there we have a nice little glowing sky and some beautiful, beautiful purple, blue, red water. It's gorgeous. All right, today let's do some clouds. Maybe some clouds that are really, since it's colder, maybe they're really wispy and they're way, way up in the sky, little cirrus clouds to get scientific. So we're gonna go right into some titanium white. Don't want a ton, don't want a ton of paint, just, just on the end of the bristles. We're gonna grab just a tiny bit of the permanent red. Just enough to give it a little glow. Sun's playing through those clouds. We're gonna go up to the canvas here and this is where you can let all your anger out, any frustration you had, we're gonna let it up, out right here on this canvas. All you're gonna do is just go in and just start dancing that brush around. These are just very wispy clouds up here. Every now and again, you can do a couple arc stroke ones, load that brush back up. All I'm doing is just dancing the brush over the canvas. A little blue comes through there. We'll make a couple little stringy clouds that come down here. Very simple. Now with a clean two inch brush, I have a couple brushes. All we're gonna do is just using that same little extra, we're just gonna, we're gonna mellow these out a little bit. Very, very lightly, very lightly. I'm blending these. Got a little hair in there. And then we're just gonna blend very lightly across, very lightly, like a whisper. Now you have all these little wispy clouds up there in the sky. And it's beautiful and it's happy up there. It's very quiet up in the sky, I always like to say. Okay, well, let's get crazy. Let's put, let's put in some other clouds here. Let's use that same color, white, a little bit more of the permanent red. A little more of an intense pink kind of color. Maybe even we'll throw a little bit of the lizard and crimson there. Make a rose color almost. Just we want it to stand out from all the other clouds up there. And starting up here, we're just going to use just the, the very top corner edge of the brush. We're going to just make little circles. Now, I don't know how much of this cloud we're going to see, because in my world, we're going to put some trees in here. But we just want it, just so maybe it's far away. That cloud is in there, just floating around. And using a corner of a two inch brush, just the top corner, we're just gonna blend the base of that cloud. Because if you look at a cloud, it's always gonna be more distinct at the top than at the bottom. The bottom, it's very misty and it's hard to tell where, where it ends. And then we're gonna, we're gonna lift up and just put a little bit of air in those clouds and then come very gently across and we just have a little, little cloud just floating right across the sky there. And we're gonna, even, we're gonna put another one in there because those, that cloud needs a friend. So we're gonna put another one in there. Same color, that rose color. But now let's grab some of that Prussian blue. 
like a darker lavender color. More of the crimson. There we go. And you're gonna do the same thing. Now that, where we blended the bottom of that cloud, that's gonna help separate the cloud we're about to make from the cloud we just made. It's gonna give it more distance. It adds another plane into your sky. So it's exact same stroke, just using the top corner of the brush. Little, tight little circles. Maybe yeah, this one trails off over here. Same thing again, take the top corner of a two inch brush, just soften that bottom of that cloud. Lift up very lightly and blend across. Very quiet and very calm. Those clouds are just floating right through this beautiful, beautiful landscape. I keep getting hairs in my painting there. All right, let's, let's clean off all the brushes here. That's always fun. Because today we're gonna get a little daring. We're gonna go ahead and put in this world, in my world, there is a mountain and he lives way, way, way far away in my world. He lives so far away. But he gets to watch over all the, this beautiful, beautiful painting we're gonna make. He gets to watch all of it grow, all the trees. He gets to look at all those clouds. He gets to look at that sunset just about every day. All right, so very, very easy way to make a mountain. If I can grab my knife here. Very simple. We're gonna make a nice dark, dark purple color today. So let's grab, let's grab some alizarin crimson some of that Prussian blue. I'm just gonna mix those up on the brush. Oh, excuse me, on the palette. While we're at it, we'll add a little bit of Van Dyke brown. We just want a dark, dark color here today. And it's tough to see what color you have there. It actually just looks like it's black. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a little bit of the titanium white and just blend that together and see what we got. If you're happy with it, then we're good to go. So, we're gonna pull the, the mountain color out very flat and then cut right across diagonally. And then you get a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife there. I'll show you again. Pull it out very flat, pull it across diagonally and you have a little roll of paint right in the end of that knife. So today let's just put a little quiet little mountain and we're just gonna just sketch out this mountain here. There's a big peak that lives right there. Simple. And we don't care at all what's happening inside the mountain there. We only care about that top edge. And we're gonna scrape out all the excess paint inside there. But see how we're leaving that, that top edge very, very distinct. And that's what we want. Maybe that just trails off that way. And we're just scraping out all the excess paint. Okay, and then with a two inch brush, we're gonna just blend this out and down, right down the mountain. This is just to get off some of that excess paint, but it also makes the mountain more distinct at the top and mistier at the bottom, because chances are you're gonna have mist and uh, who knows, maybe snow, pollution maybe down at the bottom of that mountain. And by blending it out like this, it naturally, makes that mess down at the bottom. You don't even have to think about it. And if we wanted, we could leave this mountain just like that. We, didn't, we wouldn't have to do anything to it because all your brush strokes make these natural angles in the mountain. But you can keep playing with until you see one that you like. But today we're gonna we're gonna put some snow on that mountain because it's still pretty cold out, out here where this painting is. Okay, let's go back to our knife. Let's grab a 
I'll save this purple for later. Let's grab a little bit of that titanium white and just a little bit of permanent red again. We're gonna mix that together just so we have a nice little pinkish, pinkish white. Let's pull it out flat and cut diagonally across and there's that little roll of paint on the end, end of the knife there. So in my world, the light is coming in from the right there. So all we're gonna do is just touch the paint to the top of the mountain and not even pushing. We're just gonna barely pull it down. And you want that paint to break because it shows rocks and bumps in the snow and all kinds of different things happening on that mountain. But it requires a very gentle touch. Let's go in. Go in here again and put some on this peak. Touch and without even pushing, just pull it right down the mountain. Very quiet, very quiet down that mountain. Put a little more in here. This little peak needs. Barely touching, barely touching. Just the weight of the knife on, on the paint there. Okay, so now we're gonna make a little shadow color with some reflected light bouncing off the back of the mountain because the light will wrap around the mountain. So let's take some of that purple, that light lavender color we had there, add a tiny bit more of the Prussian blue. We want a very cold shadow color here today. Load it the same way, just a little roll of paint there. And let's go in, touch, and just let that paint break as you get to the bottom. We'll give this little guy some as well. But I'm just pushing up into that highlight color so it looks like the mountain has some, some depth to it. And now while you're here, you can change the layout of your mountain. So I actually see, going back into my highlight color, a little, little peak. He lives right there. There we go. And now we need to give him a shadow. And every time you give one a shadow, that's when it really jumps out comes, plays with you. And just like that, you've made a beautiful, beautiful mountain. Quiet, just sitting out there in the glow of the sunset. And now, like we said before, there's gonna be some mist at the bottom of the mountain. So all we're gonna do with a two inch brush again is just very lightly just tap. And you really wanna pay attention to the angles in your mountain. So if the angle is going this way, you wanna tap in that direction as well. And then when the angle comes this way, we're gonna tap this down. Very lightly. We're not trying to blend it, we're just trying to soften it down there. And then very gently, just with the angles and the mountain, just lift up, it takes out those tap strokes. And now you have just a nice misty area right at the bottom of that mountain. All right. Thank you so much for watching part one of this week's video. Part two will be on Wednesday, and if you wanna go head over and watch that video, you can click here to watch part two of this painting. If you wanna watch part three of this painting, you can click on my face. And if you wanna watch the entire video painting, wow. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Not like pretend you're holding up like cue cards. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Let's Paint. My name is Christian. Let's do a Let's Paint. <laughs>